Hi, how are we doing? Good evening, everybody. We're live again at Lady Diana's Cat Emporium. Um, thank you for being so patient with us last week. We didn't do our live stream as usual. Um, we did have a series of calamitous events, which made it a little bit difficult. Um, the joys of running a business. We had our coffee machine triggering circuit failure all over the coffee, the cafe, and then we had everything else breaking. Um, as often happens when you have one electrical device go down, sometimes everything else goes with it. Uh, so our dishwasher played up, then our lights went off, and then everything else, everything, literally everything. And then spontaneously a sink decided to start leaking because when it rains, it pours, they like to do it all at once. Um, so very sorry we couldn't be there last week as planned. Um, we promised you a submarine and we did not deliver a submarine, but we were just gonna do that another day, but not today. Um, so today we are about to kick off something very exciting. Um, and actually quite a few really exciting things, but this one is about cats first and it's exciting. Um, contrary to the thingy here, it's actually not about dogs. Uh, we are part of a product trial sort of thing. It's, um, it's a activity tracker for pets and currently they've got a lot of data on dogs and they are optimizing it now for cats. So they thought, these guys at Falcana thought, well, where could we get a lot of cats and a lot of data about activity levels? And here we are with all our cat pals, which I'm gonna, hello. They're all joining me. Now, I'm not gonna lie, there is a very important reason why they're here with me and it's because I'm not above bribery. Ta-da. So I have a lot of cat friends today. I'm gonna give them some pet munchies. Um, as with everything, I, I feel like I need to caveat on our videos that we don't get paid for this stuff. We just are literally sharing the things we like. Um, I'm gonna also, whoops, sorry, hand over the camera, ask if Josh can take over um, because I can't film and look after cats at the same time. I will take it real quick and flip it. It's Josh's torso, everybody. Um, and yeah, that way he can have a look at comments as they come through and also keep the important things in frame. Like Dorian, hey. Oh, your love is so conditional on whether or not I give you a treat. Or Wendy, Wendy's, hello. Oh, you're so cute. Um, some of you who are friends of Wendy may like to follow an Instagram profile called wendy.faces uh, because one of Wendy's fans has started that um, to celebrate all the many expressions of Wendy. Uh, it is a unofficial Lady Dynast feed, but it's very cute and very good. So please do give it a follow because um, we love a Wendy fan here. Dorian loves a treat. Hey, Dorian. Now, the reason I have the treats is linked to the Vel Felcana thing that I introduced earlier. And that was because I was hoping to lure over this guy. Can you film him, Josh? Because Oberon is our first test subject. And he's been wearing his Felcana activity tracker for, oops, there you go, mate, it's on the floor, a couple of weeks. Um, he doesn't mind it. The reason we chose Oberon um, was, first of all, he is the most, I think, laid back cat we have in the cafe right now. So we thought it wouldn't trouble him too much. It is really lightweight. Um, and I might actually take it off. Oh, you don't want me to take it off, buddy? I'll take it off him at some point so I can show you the actual device itself. Um, come here, let's do this, let's do this. Wait, it's removing a collar. You're gonna be on board once you realize what I'm doing. There we go. Um, so yeah, this is a little activity tracker. Um, it doesn't weigh very much. It comes with this little Velcro. Actually, no, Velcro is a licensed term. It is a thing, fabric, hook and eye fabric of some sort. Um, so yeah, it, it kind of just like wraps around any size collar. You have to trim it to the right size. So if you've got a wider collar or, or anything, you, you can just adjust it that way. Um, you just sort of strap it on. It's easy to remove as well um, because you do have to charge it every seven days. Um, so we have not been diligent charging Oberons. <laughs> so we have uh, got a couple of blank days. Um, but most of all, what we first wanted to find out was will our cats wear one? And he was fine with it. He'd worn a collar before we adopted him. It didn't seem troubled in the slightest. Tink is very interested, so that's a good sign. Hi. Um, so once we kind of got the okay from Oberon, we were like, it looks like it's something that we could definitely participate in. So we now have collars which is, I know, a very contentious topic for some, um, but we have some collars for five of our cats and Falcana are going to send us four more activity trackers. So five of the cats at Lady Dunn's Cat Emporium are going to be part of this um, 
developing this sort of fitness device for your pets. And the reason we're very interested in this, I mean, I'm, I'm really excited about the Falcana because I am a firm believer in indoor homes as being viable. I think when you are in cities like London, there's almost in some way no other alternative. Um, there are a lot of people who just can't keep a cat if they can't keep an indoor cat. And I do think it's possible to keep indoor cats happy, but you do have to make a lot more of an effort. Um, and obviously one of the key problems that comes up with indoor housing of any kind of animal, whether it's a cat or a dog or any other sort of small to medium sized mammal is obesity and exercise levels. And I think that having something kind of like a Felcana for your pet would help give the owners the feedback that would help them make better decisions for their pet. So they'd be able to see whether or not their cat is getting the activity level that they need. Um, obviously there are gonna be other signs, like if your cat is obese, you could probably deduct that on your own, but you would like to catch that before it gets too severe and maybe something like this could help. Um, plus I'm just a real data nerd. I really love being able to sort of quantify things and, and the guys at Lady Dan is here, especially the cat carers, um, they spend a lot of time tracking data points here. So we track every single poo that is ever done in the cafe ever by a cat, not by people, and give it a score. So we have this continuum of what is normal in terms of bowel movements for our cats. We're really into data and keeping track of things. So uh, a collaboration with a company like Falcana just really kind of ties into our fondness for sort of scientific process and things like that. Um, I can see Josh is peering for. Welcome back. Hey, hi, Lindy. Hi, Sabine. And hello, Mo, uh, Rob Mo. Your mammal needs a fitness instructor to take her to CrossFit. <laughs> I feel like you may have a different kind of mammal. Um, so yes, back on track. I'm very excited about this project. They're announcing it today, sort of more officially. This isn't a particularly official announcement. It's just part of our live, live stream stuff. So I wanted to share it and um, I'm kind of excited about it. I really want to see uh, what the differences are like between Lizzie on her wheel and Oberon, who can be a maniac sometimes, uh, Dorian, who's maybe a bit more subdued. And I, I think it's gonna be fascinating to see the difference in activity levels. At the moment, um, you can track rest time and activity time. So some of you may have seen our Instagram story um, where we joked that maybe for cats it should be more accurately called the inactivity tracker because Overrun made it to like 92% of his time was spent resting and 8% of it was spent moving around and he's actually one of the more active cats so we were quite intrigued by that. Um, also he has a very healthy body weight so I mean maybe that's quite normal and this is kind of what this is all about. I mean, Falcana will benchmark this and then use it to inform how they develop their algorithm for cats. So we're quite excited to be part of that. Um, somebody is uh, very interested in this. At some point, it will also be possible to, it actually might even be possible now, but we haven't tested that functionality. Um, you can input your pet's calorie intake. So if, as I do, you measure out the amount of food you're giving your pet, um, you can then kind of input that into the, the software ultimately and it will give you a calories in versus calories out kind of report, which could be very useful. Um, so yeah, this is the Falcana Go. Um, we did discuss very briefly before I got sidetracked about collars. Now I know how people feel about collars and I don't really love a collar. If I can avoid having to put a collar on a cat, I definitely will. Um, but obviously for the Falcana to work, it has to be in some way on the cat. Um, so we have spoken to Kitty Rama and they are the producers of the only collar that is approved by International Cat Care. Um, and it's, it's sort of designated as cat friendly. It's hypoallergenic, it's very soft silicon, it's got the safety latch, so if they get caught on something, it will come undone by itself. Um, one thing that we do, and um, I'm sorry, Kitty Rama, but this is just how I feel about it, but we get rid of the bell. Um, I'm not a big fan of bells. I think it would drive me insane. I can't handle people chewing, I can't handle repetitive sound, so if I wouldn't like it, I'm not doing it to my cat. Um, so we do take the bells off, and um, we're also selling them now. Um, only is selling the best or what we think is the best so you can also buy them from us at the cafe if you're interested in that um but yeah we'll sell them unsullied so they do come with the bell but my advice is i would remove it i do understand the impact that cats can have on wildlife um but it's you know imperfect solutions all around and i don't want to drive my own pet cat crazy so we're going to be starting this very, very soon. We're just waiting for the new devices to arrive. We're very excited of it. Um, and we'll share as much as we are allowed to. Obviously, we don't want to share anything that Falcana aren't happy with us talking about because they're very much in early stages. Um, they are also getting funding. So um, 
they are running a Cedars crowdfunding campaign. If anybody is so inclined to be an investment sort, that will be available. Just Google them or something. Um, but yeah, exciting stuff. So exciting thing number one, our new test subjects, our cats. Um, exciting thing number two is we are building a backyard area. Finally, so after several years of trying to get that to work, we finally kind of reached a point where we think we can do it. Um, so today they started building the roof. And if you want, Josh, would you be able to show them out the window? <laughs> Easier said than done. Um, but we have the beginnings of a backyard area. Um, underneath that so what's going to have be available for people is through our basement lounge area you'll be able to walk through a door out the back um, the cats will have a cat flap so they can come and go we don't know if we're going to put seating in there or what we're going to do with the space um, the big challenge is uh, anybody who's looked at our window will know we have a really big pigeon problem so although we um we would love to make that space sort of widely available and accessible. If we can't keep it clean enough, it may not be something that we can do long term. So um, we're kind of going to build it and then hope for the best. Uh, we did have people coming out to talk about netting the whole space, which was very, very expensive and it would have required a lot of things. Um, and indeed, several of the pest control companies simply refused outright to do it just because of the way the building's configured and they didn't have the equipment to access it. It was, it was a whole thing. Um, so yeah, if we can't keep it hygienic, we can't really have people out there and we can't have cats out there. Um, so fingers crossed, the shelter that is going in place will do the job. And if it does, we're hoping to sort of do some more exciting things with it, but we'll see how we feel about it once it's in place and if it's effective. Um, we've got a lot of comments, which I haven't answered. I'm really sorry. So I'm going to have a little peer at the computer. Um, uh, Wookie is watching the fitness tracker intently. Yeah, I bet he is <laughs> watching. Um, and some very nice, yeah, Victor's tracker would go backwards. I believe that actually. We have talked about whether or not it's worthwhile actually putting one on him or not because we know the data. It's like 98% rest. Um, so yeah, that's very exciting, the idea of having our backyard area and we're, we're pretty keen on um, seeing that through. We think it will probably be open for use end of May, um, maybe June. It does depend on building stuff. We did get delayed already by the rain last week. Um, but yeah, should be should be June that we will have a little backyard space. Um, my hope is at least for June that we can open that door up and let a lot of fresh air in the basement because that's always been a problem that we've not been able to work on. Um, get some nice fresh air circulating. And even if we can't kind of have that accessible all the time, at least we can get some fresh air in. So um, that will be a big help, particularly in summertime. And I'm sure the Cat Emporium team would be very happy to hear that it will drop a few degrees down there. Um, so, what was the last thing I wanted to share? Oh, Cecil. So the very last update that I wanted to share um, was that Cecil had been on holiday with Ernest and Katie for just a, a, over a week. Um, hello there. Hi. Salome is waiting patiently for snuggles. Um, he came back to the cafe, not last Wednesday, but the Wednesday before, I think. My timeline is all off. Um, and unfortunately, it did not go well, so ordinarily we tend to take a fairly measured approach. We know sometimes the cats need a bit of time. Um, and in fact, I'm usually the more hysterical one who's inclined to say, that's it, it's not good, we've got to do something about this, he can't stay, or whatever. Um, and usually Laura and the cat carers are like, give them a bit of time, I'm sure they'll be fine. And we, they tend to take a much more patient approach. Um, but for the first time, we took a cat on holiday and brought it back. Laura was the first off the mark to say, this isn't going to work. Um, the cats were very aggressive towards Cecil. He was very aggressive towards them. Um, we had noticed when he was out of the cafe that a lot of things really settled down. Um, you've, if you've followed our live streams over the past month, we've talked a great deal about how taking out some of those lead cats um, really affected the social structure of the, the cafe cats who remained. Um, successful on a holiday, brought him back, and it was definitely a no-go. So. Um, very abruptly we needed to take him somewhere and he now lives with me and Donnie. So Cecil has been spontaneously adopted, which is not a normal way, but it was a bit of a snap decision where we realized that actually if he stayed in the cafe, we thought he was at risk of injury um, and perhaps aggression with the cats. Once he was gone, they were all fine again. So um, it just goes to show that even though he's not a primary aggressive cat and actually he's really, really lovely, sometimes just the wrong cat in the mix can really 
upset the apple cart, so to speak. So um, yeah, that was it was quite sudden, but he's having a lovely time. He's living with Donnie, and, and that was actually one of the other reasons we, we thought about this as a solution is Donnie is quite a social cat. And obviously I run a cat cafe, so I work quite a lot. Um, so we did want Donnie to have some company and Donnie and Cecil always got on and they're getting on absolutely fine um, in a house by themselves. Um, Donnie now has outdoor access and he's enjoying going for rooms. Um, Cecil has the same access, but he doesn't take it. He likes to stay inside. Um, so they're having a lovely time. And I think we may adopt Cecil permanently. And I do apologize to anybody who might have wanted to adopt him because he is a sweetheart. And I know that it's a, a disservice to everybody to not have offered him more publicly, but we did need to act really quickly and in his best interest. And he seems really happy. Um, with that said, we do have two cats that will be up for adoption in the coming months. Lizzie and Victor are up for adoption. They are the next two to reach their five-year milestone. Um, so do keep an eye out on our social feeds about those guys because they are ready to retire from the spotlight. Um, and hopefully we can adopt a couple of new friends to take their place um, when they go and enjoy a much deserved rest. Um, I can see Josh has got some questions. Is there anything you can see, Josh? It's not exact questions. This just people joining in. Cecil. I know, I'm sorry guys, I'm sorry. We were just really worried about what would happen if he stayed. Um, they weren't being friendly and neither was he. Um, I have noticed like sometimes with slightly jumpier cats, they're not even necessarily being aggressive to the other cats, but if they are a bit jumpy, they tend to wind them up. So I, I think Biscuit fell in that category to some extent where she would have these slightly sort of easily startled reactions to things and the other cats it would sort of be quite infectious and they'd get upset and um, yeah I think it can sometimes be a matter of a cat not even having an aggressive personality but just having a jumpy one and it can affect all of them so I think that was our, the case with poor Cecil he can be easily startled um, but yeah he, he he seems very happy and um, hopefully we can adopt some new friends who can take his place in your hearts um, so yeah that has been what's happening at the Cat Emporium. We also changed our menu last week, so that was part of why we couldn't do a live stream was we were trying to get everything ready in the last minute. So we got rid of the soups and stews and now we're doing things like toasties. Um, we've got a new range of vegan and gluten-free food. So you can get a vegan and gluten-free gluten pie. Um, there's a curried vegetable pasty and another pie, as well as um, gluten-free toasted sandwiches with a variety of vegan fillings. So we're trying to kind of uh, round out the menu a bit more. I think our previous menu was a little bit soup heavy and not everybody feels like soup, especially as it's getting warmer. I've got some new cocktails as well. So we've changed a couple of things in the past week. It has been very, very busy. Um, but yeah, shall we go for a little walk around the cafe, say hi to the cats and then I will sign off. I'm asking like you can answer. We're gonna do that anyway. Um, so yeah, I'll take you for a little walk and um, I'll keep an eye out. Thank you so much, Josh. Okay, so first things first, we've got Rodney. Hey, mate. And Dorian. Hey, girl. Hello. They have been enjoying the amount of distress that the builders have caused the pigeons. Hi, Sam. Because, um, of course, every time a builder does something, it sends the pigeons <coughs> fluttering off into the sky, and um, it's very exciting. Hi, Tinky. How's my Tink? Oh, Tinky, you look very sleepy. Cuddles now? No, you didn't seem that bothered. I'm not going to do it. Oh, hey, Peter. Were you uh, just waiting for the camera to come by and catch you at your most luxurious? I think you were. Oh, you are such a magnificent creature. He knows it. Hi, Wendy. Oh, do you want us to put the ripple rug on the floor? You look pretty interested. Well, your way of looking pretty interested is to sit on whatever you want. Oh, hey, Wendy. Who else is in the room with us? So I won't bother her. We can go on a little tour downstairs. Now, while I'm on the, um, the phone, everybody, I can't see the chat. So if you're asking me any questions, I can't see them. But I will go back up to the computer and check it. Hey, Rodney. Um, before I sign off. So if there are any questions, rest assured, I will come back to you. Hey, Obi. Hey, mate. Hey, oh. Oh, you're smush. 
I don't know if anybody's been following um, some of the fantastic facial expressions that people are tagging Obi with in um, social media feeds, but you were like the least photogenic and most beautiful cat I've ever known, Oberon. He's lovely. I think every single live stream ever that we've ever done, Sybil has been asleep on this sofa. Classic Sybil. Hi, Obi. Hey, Teddy. It's a little troublemaker, Teddy. Hi, buddy. Hey. The only person I think I haven't seen yet is Victor. So I might see if I can track him down. Oh, there he is. Oh, oh, how very unusual. He is fast asleep, as is the custom. I'm going back upstairs so I'm going to have a little quick check of any questions on the computer and then I think I'll sign off and let my hard-working kitties have a well-deserved snooze. Hey Tink. Oh see the sleepy face? I can't keep her awake. All right. So a little focus on Salome while I check the computer. Um, updates on Biscuit and Moo. Um, so yeah, Sabine asked about Biscuit and Moo. I have seen many videos of the beautiful Moo playing with her ripple rug because um, I am good friends with the people who adopted her, um, Chris and Laura. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping to go and see her in a little while. Um, Laura is a performer, so she's actually overseas in a show while Chris is at home looking after Mama. Um, so when she returns, we're hoping to catch up and maybe do a live stream from their house. Um, and today we also received an email from Sue, who adopted Biscuit, to tell us that she's doing very well. Um, but unfortunately, they did get a groomer in to cut her claws. And now she's very shy whenever a new person comes to the door because she didn't enjoy having her claws clipped. Um, so the cat care team's going to help out with that um, and give some advice if they can on, on how they've been cutting Biscuit's claws for the past couple of years. Um, so yeah, what else we got? Victor is a ninja. <laughs> He's like the slowest moving ninja of all time. <laughs> oh, and Sal is so precious. I, Sal is a big favorite of mine, Jade. I love her so much. She's got that best little face and she's so full of mischief. She's just so cute. How's my girl? Um, and I particularly enjoy playing kibble chasing with Sal. She's adorable. Hugs to Donny. Uh, I will give hugs to Donny. And you're right, Sabine, Lizzie is not on the wheel. In fact, I don't know if I have seen Lizzie in this little trip around the cafe. Um, so she must be fast asleep. I'm very, very excited to see her, uh, her activity tracker because she is hands down one of the most active cats we have. Um, we did notice in particular, like even moments when Obi was playing quite a lot, his activity tracker wasn't really registering a high level of activity. Um, and I'd be quite interested to see if she doesn't ever register as a high level of activity, even though she's very, very consistently exercising and she keeps her body weight um, quite well managed, I, whether intentionally or not, I don't know, but she, she definitely does. So um, yeah, I'm very, very interested to see the results. Anyway, I'm going to do a little turnaround and no doubt be Surprised when suddenly it's on selfie cam. Hey, yeah, always, always. Um, but at least it's not under my chin like it always is. Um, that is our live stream for today. So I'm going to sign off. Thank you very much for joining us. And sorry again about last week. Um, maybe next week we will do the, uh, the submarine thing. But if we have a backyard, I think I'd like to show you that instead. So we'll see how we go. Um, if we can, we will. Um, and now I need to figure out how to stop this stream. There we go, I found it. Um, so yeah, any comments or questions, um, do get in touch. If you want to know where to buy anything that we've used in live stream today, let me know, I'll put it in the description. Um, and otherwise, we'll see you next week. Bye for now. Wait, no. <laughs>